Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, it's been confirmed today that thousands of jobs are set to be lost after Japanese car giant Honda announced plans to shut its factory in Swindon in 2021 in a devastating blow to the motor industry. The factory employs 3,500 workers, but at least as many people work for companies which supply Honda with parts and services. So, how do those in the UK's vulnerable motor industry cope going forward? Joining us to talk about this in more detail is uh, economics professor Geraint Johns. Thanks very much for joining us, um, professor. So, we're talking, you know, in the media of 3,500 jobs here, but I suppose there could be many more. That's 3,500 jobs going out of Honda, but as you were just saying, the supply chain involves probably another 3,500 jobs. This is coming on top of similar news that we've had from Nissan in Sunderland with the withdrawal of the X-Trail uh, production from Sunderland. Uh, we've also heard bad news from Ford, uh, particularly affecting Bridge End, where there's an engine plant for all sorts of Ford vehicles, and also Jaguar Land Rover who've been hit particularly hard by the decline in demand from China, particularly for diesel vehicles. And for JLR, around 90% of their vehicles are diesel-powered. So things are changing in the motor vehicles industry in the UK, and that makes it very difficult for employees of these companies that have to find alternative employment. So, you know, what is the outlook for these workers professor what 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 you know where do they go from here well, specifically for Honda employees around Swindon, Swindon traditionally had a large engineering base with aerospace, uh, motor vehicles as well being produced there. That's less the case now, although there is a BMW plant that produces components for minis, uh, and that might be one possible uh, destination for some of the Honda workers. But the local economy now is dominated by some very different industries, so Swindon London's a, a town that is surrounded by a lot of countryside. It's the largest town uh, for miles around. And so it has a large retail sector, also a large wholesale sector. WH Smiths, for example, has uh, a major warehouse there. And a lot of employment is generated by that. Also, it's a big administrative sector, and there are several firms that have uh, their headquarters located in Swindon. So you've got, for example, Nationwide in the finance sector, you've got Vigon in pharmaceuticals, uh, and you've also got Enpower in the energy sector. All have their headquarters based in Swindon. So there's a lot of administrative type of jobs. So looking at the types of people that are going to be shaken out of Honda in Swindon, some of them are have general skills. So managers, if you're a human resource manager, a financial manager, for example, or indeed if you're a, a cleaner, you have skills that are very transferable and it should be possible for many of those to access alternative employment quite easily. On the other hand, those that have got skills in engineering will have built up those skills over many years and may find that it's not easy to get back into similar kinds of jobs, so they'd need to start again at the bottom. Right, right. And unfortunately for many of those workers, they'll find it difficult to get similar jobs with similar levels of pay. Yeah, because of the challenges facing, as you were suggesting, the car industry more broadly. So we're looking perhaps at retraining. What is the track record when it comes to retraining in this sector? There's a wonderful book uh, that draws on the experience of General Motors workers in Janesville in America, a book by Amy Goldstein. And she traces through the history of people that were laid off from GM uh, at the time that their major plant closed there. And she found that retraining has a very patchy history. Uh, for some, it is effective, but for many, people go into new jobs where they've retrained, but they are hit by a second shock because many of the forces that are affecting the motor industry in the UK now are, are affecting other industries as well. Um, but are they in a better, better position than, for instance, you know, many years ago, I remember the Corby Steelworks closing, and that led to just many, many steelworkers going on the dole, becoming unemployed. 
steel and coal, of course, very concentrated geographically. And there's an element of that with Swindon, uh, with Honda, because Honda is a major, major employer in Swindon. So there's going to be a lot of people looking for work in that area uh, at the same time. Swindon does have relatively good communications down the M4 from other centres of population, and that may help. Uh, but it, it is going to be challenging. There's, there's no hiding from that. All right, Professor, thank you very much uh, for joining us and uh, we, wish those, uh, we wish those families well. Thank you very much indeed for your uh, uh, um, advice and expertise. Thank you very much. It was an announcement they were dreading, the official news to workers at Honda Swindon plant that the car maker was moving production back to Japan with a loss of 3,500 jobs. The firm says global changes in the car industry, including a shift to electric vehicles, are to blame and not Brexit. The business secretary, Greg Clark, has been speaking in the Commons about the closure and says it's devastating for Swindon and the UK. Here's our business editor, Simon Jack. A dark moment for UK manufacturing. Swindon is the first plant Honda has closed anywhere in the world in its 71-year history. A hammer blow for thousands of Swindon workers. My wife works here, my brother works here, my cousin works here, I'm trying to think now. There's loads of us, uh, her dad, her stepdad, her brother, her mum works in the canteen, her other brother's a chef in here. Oh, I don't know, there's about 10, 12 people just from our little family, all work here. Good friends that work here, I know that have just got married, had babies, just bought houses, and it's just like, you know, you feel for these people. I feel for everyone, I really do. And even like the management that spoke to us in there, in, inside, like that, you can see it in their faces. They're just as shocked as everybody else. So, after 35 years of manufacturing in the UK through thick and thin, why pull the plug now? This is actually being driven by some very big and, and really unprecedented changes in what we're seeing in our motor vehicle industry. And this is a move really towards electrification. Uh, we've started to see it in Europe, we've started to see it around the world, and it's in response to what our consumers are looking at and also what legislation is driving us towards. Unfortunately, that means we have to start looking very closely at where we focus our investments. And at the moment, that's going to be in the markets where we have large production and large manufacturing. And that's the type of areas like North America, China and Japan. This vision of the future of the car industry may be arriving more quickly than many expected, but it's a future the government said it was prepared for. Electric vehicles only. That is not just a new road sign, it is a new mantra in global car manufacturing. But the UK government has spent hundreds of millions of pounds in trying to make the UK a leader in electric car technology. So how does today's decision reflect on one of its flagship industrial policies? It is particularly frustrating that as we have made the right call uh, in positioning ourselves at the forefront of the industries of the future, that Honda in this case um, have, for the reasons that they set out, decided to consolidate uh, in Japan. It's also a significant moment in a relationship ushered in by Margaret Thatcher, who sold the UK as a stable, business-friendly outpost in the EU for Japanese companies to locate. Brexit has changed that. The uh, predictability is a very important element. That's why uh, uncertainty has caused uh, a lot of uh, second thought about continuing business in UK. Brexit should not damage the stable, predictable economic environment that all of us enjoy today. Honda's not alone. Nissan, along with a host of other Japanese companies, have moved investment out of the UK. Brexit just gives them a chance to have a really good tidy, basically. And I'm afraid that, won't, that tidying up won't be to the UK's benefit. Brexit uncertainty may not have pushed Honda to the exit, but it has sharpened questions as to whether Japan needs the UK the way it once did. Our business editor Simon Jack reporting there. Well, as well as the 3,500 jobs that will be lost, thousands of other people in the supply chain making parts or employed in businesses relying on Honda will also be affected. With a look at the wider impact of the closure, Sean Lloyd is in Swindon for us this evening. Sean. And unsurprisingly, there is a great deal of concern in this community tonight. Honda is one of the biggest employers here. It's become quite a fixture. A career opportunity for apprentices and supply businesses have come to depend on it. On the face of it, business as usual at the Spitfire Cafe, a short walk from the Honda plant. 
Car workers are regulars here and familiar faces to its owner, Leslie Alcorn, who shared their shock at the news it's to close. We do business lunches that we send out or people come and collect. Honda have had their trade union meetings here. We've got a good working relationship with Honda, so it's very sad that the downturn in the car industry has forced their hand. Among those digesting the news, this customer, who'd helped build the plant more than 30 years ago. I was going up to all the workers and all, you know, because a lot of them young workers, men and women, and um, they all got mortgages, families. A crushing blow for those working directly at the plant. But there's concern too about how this decision will be felt more widely. The impact on the supplier network of this closure here at Honda could be significant because um, we, we will see local companies um, having to shed workers because they'll be losing the Honda orders. There are fears tonight that 500 jobs could be affected here. This factory is just a couple of miles away from Honda. It makes car seats and supplies the Japanese plant. Its car park is empty today. We've been told that workers have been sent home. The impact of the decision made by Honda already being felt here. You don't need to go far in Swindon to find someone connected to the plant. This man out shopping used to work at one of Honda's partner companies. Even down to the tiniest nut and bolt is in Honda Logistics, which then goes across to the main plant of Honda for it to go onto the cars. And do you think there will be questions over that now? I don't know if they, what they could do with the depot after, what they can do with the factories after, but it's got to wait and see. This town was built on steam well before the car industry came here. Once again, Swindon is having to adapt to changing times. Sean Lloyd, BBC News. Our business editor Simon Jack is here. So what now, Simon, for the UK car industry? Well, there's a couple of questions that this uh, episode highlights. One is the fact that now the EU now has a trade deal with Japan. That means that Japan can make cars over there, ship them into the, uh, into the EU without attracting tariffs, which are currently at 10%. That's over time. So the rationale for having manufacturing within the EU or in the UK begins to dwindle. The second question is, if indeed what Honda is saying is right, that you, if you're going to put all that investment into new electric car manufacturing, you've got to do it where it counts, where you've got you know, economies of scale, why would you do it here in the UK? And maybe that is, uh, you know, raises questions for Toyota, for Nissan and others. I think the third one is probably one for consumers. It seems the, the companies are moving very fast down this electrification route. The question is, are consumers ready to actually pick up the slack? They're going to be making millions of cars and maybe consumers aren't quite ready to adopt them in the numbers that they used to adopt pre petrol and diesel cars. So I think with those three elements there, we've got a very uncertain time, not just for the car industry here in the UK, but for the car industry globally. Mm. OK, Simon, many thanks. Simon Jack. Well, workers at the Honda factory were given the day off today after receiving confirmation they will lose their jobs by 2021. The company says it didn't take the decision to cut 3,500 jobs lightly, but with global changes, it was left with no choice. That's little consolation to the workers here, though. Minnie Stevenson has spent the day talking to workers. Minnie, what's the mood been like? Absolutely fascinating. A deeply depressing day for workers that I spoke to. Many of them have just learnt the news that they'd lose their jobs. And, of course, we can't underestimate how big a deal this is. For many of these people, they've spent their entire professional careers working at this factory. And there's also a sense, also, that, you know, in two years' time, when Honda closes its doors, there's going to be an awful lot of people, thousands, in fact, going for the same jobs here in Swindon. And we're hearing an awful lot about global uncertainty, this being inevitable, but actually it's come as a shock, hasn't it? Yeah, it's come as a real surprise. People I spoke to said, sure, we know that for years now the UK car industry has been declining, but it was only in autumn that Honda said, don't worry, you're safe here, this factory will remain open, despite, you know, the Brexit negotiations going on in the background. So then, to learn yesterday, as many workers did for the first time on social media, that they may lose their jobs, they've said to me this will go down as one of the bleakest episodes in Swinton's history. The Honda factory synonymous with Swindon. As one worker in the industrial town put it, you simply can't have one without the other. Except this morning came the news they'd expected but dreaded. People here told to pack up and go home for the day as official confirmation came, the factory to close its doors by 2021.
Good morning. Jason Newport has turned up here every day of his working life. One of thousands of people who will now lose their jobs. How are you feeling? Gutted. Totally gutted. 23 years I've been in there. That's all I've ever done, really. I mean, I've got my, my wife works there, my brother works there, my cousin works there, her dad works there, her stepdad works there, her mum works in the canteen, her other brother works um, for Zodexo, he's a chef. There's like 10, 12 people of us affected by this. Just can't believe it, really. It's all I've done, that's all I've known is this place, and it's going to go, and it's just gonna, this whole time is just going to be a total mess. <laughs> A decision from Honda HQ in Tokyo came, blaming the global changes in the car industry and a transition to electric cars. The consequences, though, felt much closer to home, on a well-trodden path for a town which has come to depend on big industries. Swindon and a new locomotive that's already historic. Swindon, of course, famously made its name as a railway town, building the steam engines that drove the Industrial Revolution. But as the railworks declined, the city found a second lease of life, cars. By the mid-60s, well over 6,000 people were employed at the steel presses, supplying parts to companies right across the country. And despite the hardships of the 70s and 80s and the 90s, Honda gave the city a huge vote of confidence, not just opening a factory, but making it the centrepiece of the firm's European car operation. It shows that Britain is still the number one place to come for people who want to invest and get into the European market. But then came the slow decline of the UK car industry, the job cuts, restructuring, recession, and now the end. Three and a half thousand jobs to be scrapped and a town left to pick up the pieces. While the company didn't directly mention Brexit, uncertainty over Britain's future trading relationships is one of the big clouds lurking over the car industry. With Honda now moving production back home to Japan, where they've now secured a free trade deal with the EU, a decision which has left Honda worker Dave Roberts unsure of what the future holds. Pretty sombre. Everyone's... Well, just numb, a bit like me now, really. How long have you worked here for? 24 years this year, so a long time. My, obviously, my, my, my concern is, is my family. I've got a family to support, keep a roof over our heads. And the thought of, you know, trying to find work with three and a half thousand other people, quite scary, really. For people here, some who have spent their entire working lives at this factory, they're less concerned with the why and far more worried about what next. Now, Honda says its decision to end manufacturing in the UK was not linked to Brexit. Instead, it blamed the dramatic changes taking place in the car industry with the shift to electric vehicles and the growing importance of the Chinese market. But many British companies do fear a no-deal Brexit may make the UK unattractive as a manufacturing base. Here's our business editor, Siobhan Kennedy. On the day Britain's manufacturers rebranded themselves as Make UK, Honda announced, somewhat awkwardly, the UK is no longer the place it wants to make its cars. The business secretary, Greg Clark, withdrew from the conference to handle the fallout, but then reversed back in at the last minute. Now, I'm not going to pretend to an audience of manufacturers that this is uh, anything other than a, a very bitter blow. He's right. Any of these business people will tell you there's no shortage of problems in British manufacturing. But the total confusion surrounding Brexit is the icing on the cake. I'm sure there's all sorts of other reasons around the specific Honda case, which we will hear in due course. But the uncertainty in the climate we find ourselves in is just not good for long-term investment at the moment. The quicker we get this resolved, the better. Timing-wise, Honda's dramatic decision couldn't be any worse today for the business secretary, Greg Clark, who came here and took to the stage to sell his vision of Britain at the heart of the next industrial revolution, led, in his view, by a high-tech, all-electric car industry. Well, Honda, for one, clearly wasn't listening. And while it went to great pains to say that Brexit had nothing to do with its decision to shut the Swindon plant, Mr Clark, the arch Remainer, was only too happy to make the link. And I've been always quite clear that a situation uh, in which our manufacturers don't have the certainty that they need about the terms under which uh, over two-thirds of our trade will be conducted 
in less than 40 days' time is unacceptable. It needs to be brought to a conclusion and without further delay. To lose one car company, so the saying goes, is misfortune. To lose two is carelessness. Because Honda's bombshell follows Nissan's, another big Japanese car maker, that just two weeks ago pulled its investment in a new model that Mr. Clark had personally sought to keep in Britain. Nissan did cite Brexit as one of the reasons, as did Jaguar Land Rover and Ford, both of whom have recently announced massive job cuts. A fact not lost on the shadow business secretary who was in the Commons today to hear Mr Clark's second urgent statement on the British car industry in almost as many weeks. Honda's decision is a damning indictment of this government's failure to support car manufacturing and ensure business confidence, both in terms of Brexit and in terms of their so-called industrial strategy. The elephant in the room for all big car companies is the shift away from diesel to electric vehicles, ironically something that Greg Clark believes Britain should be leading, but that pitch came too late for Honda. The politicians don't give a damn for us. They, we tell them what our problems are and they look and they give the usual beautiful middle class thing. Oh, how interesting. Oh, that's a jolly thing. And actually don't do anything for us. What we need to do is get a deal done very quickly. And if that means a no deal, we're not scared of that. We just want clarity. That was the message today from the hundreds of manufacturers gathered here. They want to make in the UK, just as the new logo says. But thanks to Brexit, the majority of them are simply too nervous to invest. Well, joining me now are two employees of the Honda factory here in Swindon, Derek Chambers and Jason Newport, who you saw in our earlier report. Also with us is Ian Mean, the director of Business West, which supports and promotes trade and industry in this region, and Christian Stadler, who's Professor of Strategic Management at Warwick Business School. Thank you for joining us, gentlemen. Um, if I can just turn to you first, Derek and Jason, I know it's an incredibly upsetting day for you. Just tell us a little bit about how long you've worked at Honda and what today has been like. Well, I've worked there 23 years. Obviously, yesterday we found out, so everyone just gets a text message coming through on their phone, Honda shut in, I had even gone into work. And this is before the official announcement, so yeah. you're finding out through the media. Everybody found out yeah. through yeah. a text coming through on their phone. Yeah, from a friend of a friend. Yeah. Passed down the line like it does, like wildfire, especially in situations like that. Mm. Nothing gets mentioned. No. You go in, so I'm sat at home, I'm waiting all night to go into work, Got about one hour's sleep, absolutely just sitting there racking my brain, what's going on, what's going on. Getting there this morning, and unbelievably, nothing said, no, and we just start building said. cars for two hours. Mm. And then, and then this, they have a meeting. This is yeah. going to affect your families, isn't it? Because it's yes. not just the two of you that work at Honda. No, so my wife works there. Um, she's been there, what, 17 years? Um, son Billy's been there for, what, 14 years? Yeah, my yeah. wife works there. Yeah. That's Derek's stepdad. Yeah. Her dad works there. My brother works there. I've got cousins work there. I've got friends I went to school with work there. Yeah. I could reel off about. Yeah, I've got two brother in laws work there. They've been there sort of 25 and 30 mm -hmm. years. What's it going to do to Swindon? Devastate it, really. Yeah, it's going it's to ruin the place. It's not just the Honda people, it's all, this, all the supply chains. Mm. The knock on effect, like I say, 1,200 drivers alone that supply the parts. Mm. Um, and you've then got you've got people got, that build the front end, you've got people that yeah. do the seats, you've got people that build the panels. Everything, yeah, nuts and bolts. Nuts everything. and bolts. All supplied by somebody. So you've got 3,500 there in the yeah. factory. Yeah. By the time you add everybody else up, 10, 11,000, yeah. all Easy. scrambling for a job in yeah. two years' time. All going for the same jobs from now on, mm. yeah. Um, I mean, I want to bring you in because we heard there the supply chain is going to be affected. You represent thousands of businesses in this area. How many of them are going to be impacted? Good question. We don't really know, but the estimates are locally there could be 7% of the companies in this area mm. and nationally 10%. That's a large amount of companies. Mm. Uh, and remember that these workers, these guys, they're skilled people. They were inherited as your film you saw they, the this rail. was the mm. rail city mm. proud workers really skilled workers now they were for honda a ready-made skill set so these people are going to find it very very difficult to get jobs our job as business west with other chambers of commerce uh, and other business associations and the government task force which is going to probably have its first meeting on Thursday, mm. is to start work immediately to help guys like this. Mm. Um, Christian Stadler, this 
Honda has said this has nothing to do with Brexit. Mm. Do you buy that? I don't buy it. Uh, so it's probably not the only factor. Well, for sure it's not the only factor. But when you look that Japan has a trade deal with the European Union where they can be certain that there'll be no tariffs, whereas at the moment we do not know whether there'll be any tariffs, tariffs between the UK and uh, the European Union. If they are, you know, they're 10% on cars, they'll be 4% on parts in a highly integrated uh, industry. That's a massive cost, yeah, so it will be a factor. So it's the uncertainty. There is the uncertainty. And uh, I mean, the reason why I think Honda is not talking about this, it's, uh, it's politically not opportune at the moment. Why would they, you know, say things which the government doesn't want to hear? Yeah. It doesn't do them any favors. Uh, so there's no need for them to blame it on Brexit. Mm. But they're also shut in Turkey. That's not in the EU. The, that is true, yeah. So yeah. what's that got to do with Brexit? Nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So the consolidation, sure, but you know, Britain was for many decades the entry point to the European market. Mm. Tony Blair said it, yeah, yeah. in the little uh, video early on. That, that's why uh, what it was originally, uh, this kind of bridge between the world uh, and Europe. And uh, I'm afraid we're losing some of that advantage here. Derek and Jason, the government has said it's going to do everything it can to support Honda workers and people in this community. Do you feel at all buoyed by that? Is it <laughs> Not really. No. It well, well, where they're going to magic these jobs up from, you know, the area. I don't even see the Prime Minister or any... Has she said anything today? I've not heard a thing. No. I've watched the news all day. She hasn't said a thing. Yeah. That some of those politicians, the top ones, not just anybody, some, the Prime Minister or whoever, they need to get to Swindon, they need to come to this town and have a look at what it's going to do well, to yeah, this place. What it's going to do, yeah. Well, I where certainly we, hope the Prime Minister's listening tonight. Sure. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank okay. you all of us for joining us. Now, back here for some news. And according to Honda itself, it wasn't Brexit, but a fundamental shift in the car market that appears to have done for its factory in Swindon and the 3,500 jobs that go with it. The company confirmed the worst in an announcement in Japan today. Here, the relevant government minister, Business Secretary Greg Clark, said Honda's decision only goes to show how much there is at stake a Brexit deal was needed to end the uncertainty. He said. We're leaving the EU and they're leaving Swindon. The company says the two facts are not connected and for those who work here, the reasons why are hardly their main concern, but rather how they'll survive when their jobs disappear. We've got a family to support, keep a roof over our heads and the thought of, you know, trying to find work with three and a half thousand other people, quite scary really. That's all I've done, that's all I've known is this place and it's going to go and it's just going to, this whole time is just going to be a total mess. The decision to close the plant was confirmed thousands of miles away in Tokyo. Honda's president mentioned Brexit, but not as the cause, citing global trends towards electric cars instead. I'm not going to understate what a bitter blow this is. But the spectre of no deal overshadowed exchanges in the Commons, the business secretary dismissing the idea there was no link. On the minds of many investors around the world uh, is an anxiety that is, uh, that is caused by a lack of knowledge uh, as to what our trading relationships will be with our most important neighbours uh, in uh, just over a month's time. Honda itself warned last year that leaving the EU without a deal could cost the company tens of millions. So there can be no doubt this government's reckless threats of no deal and prolonged uncertainty is having an impact on business decisions in the here and now. Growth in the car industry, which was steady until 2016, has now stalled. But job losses appear to have stemmed from a number of different factors. Brexit uncertainty, only part of the story. By last November, 900 had gone at Vauxhall's Ellesmere Port factory to make the plant more competitive. In January, 4,500 went at Jaguar Land Rover. The losses blamed on a slump in demand for diesel cars and a sales slowdown in China. And earlier this month, Nissan announced its X-Trail model will be made in Japan and not Sunderland, as originally planned. What you are seeing is something of a perfect storm for the industry. We have this shift from the internal combustion engine to electrification, and that's clearly what's behind this decision uh, from Honda. You have a precipitous decline in diesel. On top of that, for the UK, we have Brexit. 
It's certainly making investment choices more difficult. Whether Honda ever reconsiders its decision to move out of Swindon may well depend on Britain securing a good Brexit deal, and sooner rather than later. Libby Wiener, News at 10, Westminster. OK, well, our science editor, Tom Clark, is here to talk about all this. Tom, let's just leave aside Brexit for a moment. One of the consistent themes in all this depressing news about the car industry, certainly directly with Honda today, but they're not alone, has been this sort of emphasis on electric cars. Now, we, we don't, you know, we don't buy many electric cars in this company. There seems to be very little market for them. I guess it begs the question, why isn't the government doing more to encourage us to go electric? Well, the government says it's doing everything it can. It wants, a part of its industrial strategy, Gray Clark's industrial strategy, is to make renewable transport, clean transport, you know, central mm. to that. But the, the figures tell a very different story. The, the uptake of the growth in mm. plug-in hybrid and pure electric vehicles in the UK is, less than, is about half of what it is across the EU. So we're doing great there. For pure electric vehicles, less than 1% of market share in 2018. We're not doing great. Why is that? Well, you talk to analysts and they actually tell you the incentive schemes just aren't there. There was a tax break for plug-in hybrid cars that was scrapped last year. The grant that you get for buying these expensive new electric vehicles was reduced by about £1,000 at the same time. And the incentives for fleet operators, some of the biggest buyers of cars, were also removed uh, around that time. There's confusion as to when they'll be replaced. Mm. So that's a real question. Mm. So you've got a company like Honda pulling out, saying it's because of batteries, not Brexit. Mm. That's a big problem for the government. They wanted companies like Honda to be based here to stimulate the economy. We've got highly, tr highly skilled workers. Mm. Some of the companies making the most important components for electric cars, like the, the motors, mm. the drivetrains, the, the power management systems, are here in the UK. But that value chain that we need to sell into you know, car mm. makers like Honda, if Honda leaves, um, it's only Nissan now left in the UK making battery cars. Central to the UK's mm -hmm. clean growth strategy, not just for our um, in carbon emissions, but also the clean air that we, we really need to clean up around the UK as well. OK. Well, we will see. Thank you very much indeed. I've been